Over here we've got uh, Mel Stottlemyre, the pitching coach of the 1986 New York Mets World Championship team. Right here is good Mel. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to meet yeah. you. Well, thank you. I actually met you a long time ago. I know you do a lot of charity work. This was at North Shore University Hospitals. Uh, they had a charity event where they uh, had a clinic for kids. You came in to, to, with Frank Viola to teach the kids to raise money for charity. So I know you do a lot of charity work, and that's great. What have you been doing these days charity-wise? Well, you know, I live out in the state of Washington, and I've been uh, playing in a few golf tournaments for, for charities. I, uh, usually if I'm invited, I'll, I will try to make it. I'm not a very good golfer, but, you know, I believe strongly in, uh, you know, us trying to give something back to people and to charities. So I try to get involved as much as possible. Mel, it's, it's great to see you here. What does it mean to, to you to get back with all these guys? and be able to reminisce and talk about 86. Obviously, you've been a member of so many championship teams at this point. Well, you know, I have, but uh, I, this one is a special one. The 86 Mets team was, was uh, a very, you know, a very diverse club. They had a lot of different types of individuals on it. We had a very strong pitching staff. We had a strong lineup. We played good defensively, played good baseball the entire year. And we were a very intimidating team. And, um, you know, I think we carried that right on through to the end of the year right on into the World Series and anytime you're on a championship team no matter what it is it's a special meaning to it to where we've been I haven't seen a lot of these guys and uh, you know some of them in a year some of them two years but you sit down with them and you start talking and it's like you were sitting on the bench with them yesterday it really does even for the fans seem like it was just yesterday well you know it does and of course uh, the fans here in New York have have remembered the 86 Mets team, uh, you know, a great deal, and they will continue to remember it because it was a great ball club. It had been a lot of years uh, since the Mets had been been in the World Series and from, uh, you know, 86, I guess, I don't know, the late 60s, early 70s. And uh, at that time, New York was really crying for a, a winner, and the Mets produced it. You know, you had so much talent, especially in the bullpen and in the star as the starters go as well. Was it? Was there ever a point in the season where you felt nervous or didn't know which guy to go with or had trouble deciding? Or it just seems like it, it was so easy. Pick this guy or that guy or this guy. Well, you know what? We were so blessed in '86 that uh, we never had too many key injuries on the pitching staff, and I was pretty relaxed all year that I had the staff that could do the job and uh, carry us right on through through the uh, playoffs and into the World Series. We didn't have too many of my starters that missed their spots. Uh, we had a tremendous bullpen. We had a great variety out there uh, with, with lefties, righties, and different kind of pitchers. You know, we had Roger McDowell, who was a tremendous sinker ball pitcher. We had Jesse Orozco, who was great from the left side. And, uh, and uh, you know, the combination of the other guys leading up to that, the starters I had were tremendous. I had five of the best starters that you can, uh, you can get. And... I said early in the year, in spring training that year, I remember myself saying it, I have five guys that are capable of winning 15 games each. And if you multiply that, you get 75 games out of it. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I got 74 wins out of my starting staff. So that's, that's a head start into a championship year. Well, it's terrific. And I see you smiling, and that's so nice to see because I see as you reminisce and you call these memories back you're getting you're almost getting giddy you're getting excited about it now Sid and Ron had such a great year that year but uh, Dwight Gooden so many people have said he had so much talent especially at that age talk about Dwight back then and how good he was well I'll tell you how good he was I coached for a long period of time and he had more talent at 19 and uh, you know which would have been put him in, in 1985 and in 1986 than anybody I've ever coached. It was just tremendous, the talent he had, where he could tune up his game whenever he needed to. A man on third base, less than two outs, he would just tune it up a notch. He always had those couple extra, you know, miles per hour in his back pocket, and he could throw a three and two curve ball right on the, bu and buckle the hitter right, you know, right on the knees almost every time. He was tremendous. It, uh, he should have been a Hall of Famer, and it's a shame what happened to his career. Now, I heard Ozzy Smith once say that he never was afraid of a pitcher except for Doc Gooden, and he, he said that you could hear the laces of the ball as the ball rotated coming near him. Hey, did, you hear, did you hear this around the league from a lot of different guys? Well, I really did. Nobody wanted to face Doc. You know, that, that, uh, he, he had such tremendous talent. 
And again, you know, he could turn the ball up whenever he wanted to and, and get a couple miles extra. And uh, he, he knew where it was going. I mean, he was a polished pitcher at 19, which is amazing. Most of the guys that you see in, the, in his category and pitch the way that he did when he was 19 years old have been around for, you know, five, six, seven years. But uh, he had that at an early age. Mel, well, you're a terrific gentleman. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Keep smiling. Thank you. I have to. <laughs> That's all I can say. Keep smiling, and thank you for the memories as a fan. Thank you. I'm Michael Arts, is broadcasting live here at Strawberry's Grill. The night's almost over, but we're not going to wrap it up just yet. We're broadcasting live thanks to the Teradek Cube, and this is the 1986 Mets 25th anniversary celebration of their 1986 World Series championship. We'll be back in just a few moments, so stick with us and be terrific.